everyone, and welcome back to Bible Club Online. Let's start with a word of prayer. Lord, in Jesus' name, we lift up our time. I pray that your word, the entrance of your word, that it would bring light to our hearts. We pray that you would be real to us and that we would know you more today. In your name, amen. So we have been talking about, in recent weeks, how Jesus came and his main purpose was to come and to die on the cross for our sins. And just a couple weeks ago for Easter, we talked about how without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness. But even better than that, when after Jesus was crucified and died on the cross for our sin, the best thing was that he came back and he was raised from the dead according to the scriptures. And so when Jesus came back, he actually stayed on this earth for 40 days. And he was telling the disciples some very important things. And he was saying, I'm going to go away. Meaning that he was going to ascend and actually leave the earth. And ascend into heaven. And before he did that, He was telling his disciples that they should stay in the city of Jerusalem until they were clothed with power from on high. Now we know that the disciples were believers in Jesus and when we're a believer in Jesus, he actually comes and lives inside of us. He's like a special treasure and we're like a vessel. And Jesus comes and he lives inside of us. And we're sealed with the Holy Spirit. And that treasure is in us. So what did Jesus mean when he said, stay in Jerusalem so that you'll be clothed with power from on high? Well, he didn't want this treasure to just stay hidden inside the vessel. He wants everyone to see him. He wants everyone to see Jesus and for us to be living letters that are written to all people that they might know how to go to heaven, how to be in God's family. And so when he said, you'll be clothed with power, he meant, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm not going to leave you empty handed. I'm not going to leave you powerless because... While I'm up in heaven, God the Holy Spirit is going to come down and be with you and walk alongside of you and fill you. And he is going to fill you with power. Power to live a holy life. Power to overcome sin. Power to overcome difficult situations. Power to understand his word. Power to know God's will for your life. And so this word power, the Bible was originally written in a language called Greek. And this word power, we're going to look at a Greek word. And this word, it might look a little funny, but it is dunamis, power. Now from this word dunamis, we get our word dynamite. And so God wants us to have power like how dynamite explodes. He wants us to have great power to live this life. And so when Jesus gives us the Holy Spirit, he gives everyone, all believers in him, they all have a special measure of the Spirit. They all will receive the power that they need to do what God wants them to do, that they might use the treasure that's hidden inside of us. Jesus has entrusted us with himself. We have that treasure inside of us. And to keep that treasure from being hidden, 
He said, when you're clothed with power from on high. So here we have a believer. And you can see here's the treasure right here. And Jesus wants the Holy Spirit to fill us. And he said, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. He does not want that treasure to be hidden. He wants everyone to see Jesus. He wants everyone to hear the gospel, to hear the good news. And that will give us power to do everything that God has called us to do. Now, Jesus in Matthew 25, starting in verse 14, he told us a story, a special parable about people that received a treasure and what they did with us. Jesus is telling us, I'm watching. What are you going to do with the treasure that's inside of you? Are you going to be wise and use it well, or are you going to be foolish and waste it? So the story, Jesus said there was a master, like a landowner. So the first servant, Jesus said, I'm going to give you five bags of money. Now, just one of these bags was so valuable, it was as if he had worked and had the money for working for 20 years. Some people think this was even five bags of gold that the master gave to the servant, like hundreds of thousands of dollars, so valuable, so much property that the master was entrusting to this servant. Now, the second servant, He also had a special measure. This one had five, and so just like we get a special measure of the Spirit, this servant here, he received two bags of money. And then we have a third servant, and he was also trusted with some property of the master, and he received one bag of money. Now this doesn't mean that this one is better because he has five bags. This is according to his ability. And that word ability is dunamis. So this was the five bags of money. This was the dynamite. This was the power that this servant needed to do the will of the master, to fulfill all his plan. The master gave him everything that he needed, the dynamite, the power, the dunamis that he needed to fulfill the plan while he was away on his far journey. And so the master left. And this is the test. When the master leaves, what are the servants going to do? So the master has gone on his far journey. And right away, the servant with the, the five bags of money He works right away and puts his money to work. And the second servant with the two bags of money, he does the same thing. And he shows that he has, even though the master is far away, he has instant obedience. And he goes and puts his two bags of money to work right away. Now, the third servant, he did something a little bit different. And he came outside somewhere and he dug a hole in the ground and he took his bag of money and he went ahead and he put it in the hole here in the ground and he hid it. And here it was buried in the ground. Now, the master was gone For a long time, but after a long time, he came back. Now let's think about this story for a minute that Jesus is telling. There's a master, and Jesus, this represents Jesus. The master goes on a long journey far away. Jesus has ascended into heaven. He's kind of far away in a sense. And so 
the master is gone a long time. We know Jesus ascended to heaven 2,000 years ago, and we're waiting and waiting, and it seems like a long time. But in the story, Jesus says the master comes back, and we know that Jesus is coming back. Like we've talked about, the Bible tells us 1,845 times Jesus is coming back. And in this story, Jesus says that again. And while the master is away, there is work to be done. This is a time to work. Night's coming when no man can work. And so they're busy working with the treasure that's entrusted to them. That's the presence of God himself. And look how valuable it is. The most precious, the most valuable thing we can have is to be filled with the spirit of Jesus Christ. It is treasure unimaginable. Riches unsearchable to be filled with the spirit of Jesus Christ, to have the measure that he wants us to have, to have the power, to have the dynamite, to do the will of God in this earth. So the story relates to all those things. Now, the master comes back and he calls his servants. He's gone a long time, but he comes back. His servants come before him. And the master says, okay, guys, it's time for you to give an account. Tell me what you've done with the treasure. So our first servant, our blue guy, he says, master, see, here's your five bags of money. And look, while you were away, I was able to produce five more. And the master, he said, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in a little, and I'm going to put you in charge of much, and now enter into the joy of your master. Now, the second servant comes before the Lord to give his account. And he says, Master, here's your two bags that you gave me. And look, while you were away, I was able to make two more. And again, even though he had just two and this guy had five, the same words that the master gives. He says, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful in a little. I'm going to put you in charge of much. And now, enter into the joy of your master. And now we come to our third guy. And remember, he did something different. Hmm. He put his money in a hole in the ground. That's really different to think about. Why did he do that? What, does, what is the master going to think about that? So this guy, he goes and he gets his bag of money out of the ground. And he says, here you go. Here you have what's yours. And then he begins to make some excuses. And he says, I, I was, I was afraid because I knew that you were a mean master and that you were harsh and that you were strict and that you were going to take what wasn't yours. Oh, oh, that sounds serious. So he says he's afraid. He says the master is mean. And then he actually accuses the master, saying you were going to take what wasn't yours. You were going to take some, some from where you hadn't sown. You were going to harvest something. It seems like he felt like he wanted this bag of money for himself. And he wanted it to profit for himself. And so he hid it away here in the ground. And so the master says, oh, so you knew that I was mean, huh? 
If you knew that, why didn't you do something with it, like give it to the banker so that you could at least get interest on it? You know, he's entrusted us. Jesus, the master, has invested in us. He's expecting a return for his investment. He wants to inherit something from us. And so what he says about this servant, he says, uh-oh. You are evil and lazy. You have hoarded treasure in these last days to keep it for yourself. And so take his one bag away from him and give it to the one who has 10. So in this story, Jesus is showing us when we're faithful, there is a great reward for being faithful to what the Lord has called us to do. And now, very serious, Jesus said, now this servant here is worthless. Take him and put him in outer darkness. And in that place of outer darkness, Jesus describes it as a place of weeping. This is a terrible place. And he goes on and Jesus describes it as also a place, this is kind of a big word, of gnashing of teeth. If you can imagine a wild animal like a lion tearing its prey with its teeth, this is a cruel place where people are fighting and biting and devouring each other, a place of weeping and sorrow. So what Jesus is telling us is that God is looking for servants who will be found faithful. He's seeking those who are faithful to his call so that they can enter in to all the joy of Jesus Christ. So let's take a look at our title. Now our title today is actually... A question. Will you be found faithful, faithful to Jesus Christ? And so this is our question. Will you be faithful? Will you be found faithful? Now let's imagine if to be found faithful, we had to balance this question mark on the end of our finger. So let's think about this servant here and what went wrong. Remember, it seems like he wanted to keep the bag of money for himself. He was trusting in himself. He wanted to profit himself. And when we trust in ourselves, there's no way. It's not going to work. And so he wanted to profit himself. He thought he could come before God and give an account like that. Ooh, ooh, not going to work. Now let's think about the first servant and the second servant, those with five bags and two bags of gold or two bags of money. What did they do different? They allowed Jesus to come into their life 
They allowed his word, they allowed his spirit to come and to rule and to reign in their lives. And when we do that, we can do the impossible. And every question is answered. And we have all power in heaven and earth to answer the call, to fulfill the plan that God has for us. That third guy, Jesus says, behold, all souls are mine. He lived his life for himself, for his own profit, and that never works. And so let's now take a look at our memory verse for today that matches our story. So here's our first line, for we must all appear. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And you can see we have a dot, dot, dot here. So there's a little bit more of the verse. We're going to put up where our verse is and then open our Bible for just a second and read it together. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And this is found in 2 Corinthians in chapter 5. And verse 10, and I put 10a there because this is just the first half of the verse. So let's take a look in our Bible and see what the rest of it says. So we have 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each of us may receive what is due for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. Remember, God is watching. He's keeping an account. We have to give an account of our life before God. So let's pray here at the end of our Bible Club. Lord, thank you so much. We do pray. We want to be ready to meet you. We want to be ready to appear before the judgment seat of Christ that we would do all that you would have us to do. We want to receive a full reward. You want us to receive a full reward. And we pray for that for each one who watches this. And we ask that you would help us to be filled with your spirit and filled with the knowledge of your will and your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I'm excited to tell you that we have someone who did the 1 Corinthians 13 memory verse. We actually have a few people that did it, and this was one of the prizes that they chose. So they're going to be receiving the prize, and we have an example. We're going to show you a short video of someone doing the memory verse so that you can see how you could turn it in if you wanted to get a prize, too. 1 Corinthians 4 through 8. Love is not patient. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envy or boast, love is arrogant, love is not arrogant or rude, love does not insist on its own ways, love rejoices, love does not rejoice in wrongdoings, it rejoices in the truth, love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, love never ends. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. In the description box below, I have some worksheets. You can earn points and earn prizes for doing the worksheets. We have a worksheet related to the story. And there's also two guys in the Old Testament that acted like this servant. In Judges chapter 7, there's a guy named Achan, and he hid treasure. And then over in 2 Kings chapter 5, there's the servant of Elisha named Gehazi, and he took treasure from Naaman and he hid it. 
So these two guys, they did similar things to this guy. And the stories in the Old Testament are examples for us, often examples of how not to live. And so there's a worksheet in there about those two guys too, where you can get some bonus points. So take a look in the description box for those worksheets. You can photograph them and email them to me or text them to me. So earn some points, you can win some prizes.